what you can say for certain is that the sites that are set aside in England whose primary purpose is nature conservation, which is what the Convention on Biological Diversity said we should be doing, is not 17%. It's somewhere between 10 and 12%. So even in a nation as rich and as, care, as rich as Ireland that cares about nature conservation as much as we do, we still haven't got the, the, the level that we Britain signed up to, along with lots of other countries in the Convention on Biological Diversity in 2010. We're not near to seven, we're not we're not at 17% yet. And despite our wonderful nature reserves, and despite all the work that's gone on since Rothschild and the establishment of national nature reserves and the establishment of the wildlife trust movement, despite all that work, we are still losing plant and animal species from this country, sometimes at a truly alarming rate. <coughs> Many of England's sites uh, are just too small. 77% of SSSIs and 98% of local wildlife sites are smaller than 100 hectares. And you'll see why size matters in a minute. The losses, again, as you've already heard, of, of some habitats have been so great that the areas that remain are no longer sufficient to hold additional loss of species. So 97% of species-rich grasslands have been lost between 1930 and 1984, including, as you heard, some of the sites in, in your wildlife trust area. I'm, not, I'm only going to show you one graph, and this is it. Concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, this is the, each of these dots is a woodland. And it shows the number of breed, woodland breeding bird species in each of these woodlands. These are little woods at this end, and these are big woods at that end, and these are rather few species at this end, and a lot of species at this end. Actually, for those of you close to, and technically, uh, this is a logarithmic scale, but it doesn't matter. But these are uh, these are woods that these these are woods that are ten times bigger than the smallest, a hundred times bigger than the smallest, and a thousand times bigger than the smallest. So it's a wide range of woodlands, and this scale has six breeding species, ten breeding species, and twenty breeding species. This, this by the way, is a, is a willow warbler, uh, and uh, in, and that relationship, interestingly enough. It, is, is, is called a species area relationship. It's one of the most robust relationships in ecological science. It doesn't matter what you're looking at, you will see exactly that kind of relationship for any kind of organism in any kind of habitat. There's more species in big pieces of habitat than little species of habitat, little bits of habitat, but in a surprisingly regular way. Species bounce around because of climate and weather and interference. And actually, this is real data. This shows the heron population uh, the, the, from the BTO Heron census going back to the 1930s. It's one of the longest running data sets for any kind of organism anywhere in the world. And sure enough, heron populations bounce around, and these are hard winters, and after some hard winters, the heron population takes a real pasting. Now, let's just, in our minds, uh, reduce the amount of habitat available to herons by this much. And as soon as that happens, so this is the baseline now, we've, we've reduced the uh, amount of heron habitat by two-thirds, equivalent of a small nature reserve, and herons in Britain would have gone extinct at least twice. So size matters because it stops populations fluctuating to extinction. Populate, populations of all kinds of organisms on little reserves are much more likely to fluctuate to extinction. 